By now, I've heard all of the criticisms of this portion of the walk through the wheel of time. But sometimes you gotta walk your own path and hope that path is in line with daggers. Rounding a corner, Rand stopped with a hand against one wall to seize the source. A fool thing not wanting men to see him stagger when someone tried to kill him, but there it was. Not just any someone, a man. Demondred, or perhaps Osmondian, come back at last. Maybe both. There had been an oddity, as if the weaving came from different directions. He had felt the channeling too late to do anything. He would have died in his rooms. He was ready to die. He seized the source and Saidi flooded him with molten cold and freezing heat, with life and sweetness, filth and death. His stomach twisted and halfway in front of him he doubted himself. For an instant he thought he saw a face. Not with his eyes, in his head. A man, shivering and unrecognizable, gone. He floated in the void, empty and full of power. You won't win, he told Luther. If I die, I'll die me. I should have sent Ileana away, Luther whispered back. She would have lived. What's up, bookworms and wheelies? Mike back again for yet another Wheel of Time review as I'm slowly getting back on that wheel. And what I mean slowly, that isn't like me foretelling what's about to happen in this review because I have no idea. This is the longest I've ever taken between finishing a Wheel of Time book and uh, doing the review for it. Uh, so uh, I don't know how this is going to go. But in case you don't know, I finished The Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan and I'm ready to talk about it again. I do not know how this is going to go, but before I do, I just want to make sure that you guys know this is just my opinion. Uh, in the past, I have been critical of a couple of things in Robert Jordan books, and uh, it didn't go over well. But again, know that all my criticism is constructive. I've already said I think Robert Jordan is one of the greatest writers to ever walk this earth. So you know that I appreciate the man's work. So all my criticism is definitely not a slight on the man himself. So please... Take it just as my opinion, and if we disagree, that's fine, guys. We're here to talk about, you know, difference of opinion. Perfectly fine on this channel, but this is not going to be a bashing video. This is not going to be a praising video. This is going to be me talking about a very divisive book in this series. Now, before I get going, I do want to say that while most of my book reviews are no spoilers, all of my Wheel of Time book reviews are 100% spoilers for that book that I'm reviewing and all the books that came before. So if you have not read the first eight Wheel of Time books, turn back now, bookmark this video, come back after you read it. It really won't take you that long. I mean, I started this back in March, and it's December now, so uh, again, I, I took lots of breaks between that. But uh, again, if you've been following along with me while I've been doing this reading, and it's taken this long, uh, know that uh, I feel like the journey's been worth it. Uh, I still have no regrets, and I'm still looking forward to keeping going. And I'm going to get all that out in front before I do this review, because... Uh, I want to say up front that I feel like this is the first Wheel of Time book where I have more negatives than positives. So uh, if that's giving away my review, <laughs> there it is. But um, again, I have no idea what I'm going to say here. I've got some notes, and I'm going to kind of go through them. And these are the notes I made while I was reading, so it isn't really structured very well. So, uh, so, so bear with me. Uh, to begin things, I think that this was probably the worst prologue yet in any of the Wheel of Time books. They seem like they get longer and longer. And I don't think that that's a reason why this is really bad. It's just it felt kind of like 100 pages of nobles deciding something needs to be done about the Dragon Reborn. Um, okay, I really didn't think we needed like 100 pages of that. Uh, Varen getting confessions from the, uh, the captured uh, Aes Sedai, you know, that are uh, in the care of, a.k.a. tortured uh, by the wise ones. And then you got uh, Moradin. Uh, he's, he's wielding the true power and cackling like some kind of 80s Hanna-Barbera cartoon villain, and it, it again, it just really felt like 100 pages of nothing. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to understand the, uh, the criticisms of this book. Uh, again, guys, no, I did not go into this with that mindset, though, because, you know, a lot of people said it started in Crown of Swords, and if you watch that review, uh, you know, I really liked the uh, Crown of Swords. So uh, I definitely am not going into this uh, with, you know, with daggers bared, you know, so to speak. 
Uh, but again, then we get another 100 pages of the Supergirls. And what I said in my last review was that um, what I want for the next book is I want a little less of the Supergirls. And in case you don't know, I call Elaine, Nynaeve, and Egwene the Supergirls. Uh, now it's kind of turned into um, uh, Elaine, Nynaeve, and Avienda as the Supergirls, as Egwene's off doing her own thing. Uh, and so, of course, well, basically the first 200 pages of this book are them and a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of gals I just don't care about. You know, it's again, it's just it's so much time is spent on these characters that I'm supposed to feel something for, and I just. I don't. In fact, I think I like Elaine less and less each book. And she just kind of adds to it in this one. But uh, again, it's like 100 pages of them walking and deciding if they're going to use when and where they're going to use the Bowl of the Winds. So I'm like, I felt like this first 200 pages could have been tacked on to the end of the last book. That's, I mean, they went through the whole big side quest mission of getting this Bowl of the Winds. And then I was like, okay, well, you might as well just use it. This is what it was going to take to get to them using it. But uh, again... I knew this about the so-called slog coming in, uh, but, you know, this is the first time I feel like I'm truly feeling it, because I didn't get that in Crown of Swords, like, at all. Uh, this one, I really, really fit it. And again, I'm not an instant gratification reader. I feel like if you are the type that needs instant gratification, you haven't made it. You're not only not reading this series, but you haven't made it to this point, and then you're not watching this video, so, uh, so never mind. Um, I guess the first hint of anything good for me that happens in this book is when Elaine tries to unweave a portal, and uh, it just it kind of ends up setting off a nuke and like kills a shit ton of Sanchan. So I mean, I guess that was good. That's good stuff. I mean, that was really cool. I, again, I just felt like it could have got there a lot faster, and uh, it didn't exclude you know it didn't excuse the the two hundred pages of nothing, you know that we had to, to kind of get there just a bunch of people bickering while they walked. I just it just too much, too much, and, and Elaine just continues to make choices that make me just like her less and less. It's just, I don't know. I, it just, I mean, at least this time she took down some Shan Chan with her, so I mean, that's cool. But uh, they, they finally use the bowl. Elaine and Avienda, for some reason, they choose to become first sisters because reasons. Um, I, there's a lot of uh, theories out there that they become romantically involved in this book. You know, I feel like uh, Jordan writes relationships in such a way that if you're looking for them, I feel like they're there. Uh, I, I know at the time that this was written, that kind of stuff, uh, what I mean by that kind of stuff is in the 90s is, is a lot of uh, same-sex relationships were still kind of frowned upon by a lot of society. So a lot of authors were, it seems like they, they feel like they have to have that now. Back then they felt like if they were doing it, they kind of had to keep it. You know, I mean, even if you go back and read like Game of Thrones now, if you don't, if you aren't paying attention, you have no idea that, uh, that, that Renly and uh, Loras are, are involved unless you're really looking for it. So I mean... I still felt like fantasy authors were kind of just kind of keeping it there. But if if Elaine and Avieta are kind of involved in this book uh, sexually, I, I guess I missed it. But uh, again, they're obviously becoming very, very close while they're out on the road. And uh, hey, it, it, hey, keep yourself happy, so I say. But you know what I didn't like about A Crown of Swords? Uh, the book that I really liked is Morghese. I talked about why I didn't care about Morghese. I felt like her story's done. I don't need her anymore. I wish she'd have flung herself out that window. But guess what we get more of in this book? More gays! And she's got a love interest now! Dear God! Uh, so Parrot and his crew, you know, they're kind of teamed up with more gays and what's left of the little group. And the, uh, the, the wise ones come and they tell Parrot that he needs to, uh, to kill Masima, you know, the dragon prophet. And he's like, nah, bro. But, you know, he doesn't have any problem, you know, stretching the necks of some of the, uh, the, the, uh, the dragon prophet's followers. You know, he stretches those necks with no problem. Uh, but one cool thing in this section that I really did like was seeing Elias Machera again. If I am wrong on this, like I said, it's been a long time since I read Eye of the World. I believe that's the last time we saw him was in Eye of the World. He was a character I very I know he was mentioned, but this is the last time this is the first time we've seen him since then. So I'm like, oh sweet, awesome. We got a returning character that I really am interested in hearing more about. And all he's there to do is give Perrin marriage advice. Weird choice, Robert. Weird, weird choice. Uh what? Then there's another queen. I think it's Alindra. Alindra? Uh, forgive me, guys. There are so many characters at this point. I'm just starting to... This. I used to keep like a little express, uh, Excel spreadsheet and kept all these people. There's so many of these pop up in this book that I'm just starting to like... You know what? If they're important enough, their name is going to keep coming up. Because uh, that's just where I am at this point. But she shows up and she bends the knee to Perrin. Um, okay. I mean, either Fayil is a shrew negotiator or... or 
or parents just all that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought that was just kind of, kind of, I don't want to say random. It just seemed kind of out of nowhere. So you got all these people just been in the need of parent all that now. And okay, but don't call him a Lord. Don't you dare call him a Lord. So if you've been following, around, following along with my reviews of the series, you know that Perrin has consistently been towards the top of my power rankings. And my power rankings, that's an official list I've never actually released. But, it, you know, I liked him. I liked Lana quite a bit. Uh, but uh, I've reached a point where when I turn the page now and I see that it's a Perrin chapter, I kind of start to groan out loud. So uh, it's not the character. It's just I feel like Robert has no idea what to do with them. And I think I talked about this last one, so I'm not going to rehash it too much. Um... I would rather characters just not even appear in the series, like how Matt doesn't show up in this book, and I feel like that hurts it quite a bit. Uh, I would rather the characters just not even show up in that book than have them do nothing. I don't even understand why Perrin needs to be in this book, except just for the really stupid ending that I'll get to when I get to the ending. Uh, but yeah, just if I kind of feel like I'm, I'm losing my motivation anytime there's a, a Perrin uh, chapter at this point. Uh, what else? Um, let's see. You know, it isn't even Fael's fault, by the way, that I feel that way. I feel like a lot of people, the Fai, everybody blames Fael. I didn't think it was her fault, not in this book at least. But for me with Fael, it, I, I don't feel like that's the story that needs to wrap up. If there's one story that needs to wrap up in this series, besides more gaze, it's the Shido. Uh, I felt like after, after Shadow Rising and Fires of Heaven, they served their purpose. I didn't need them anymore. Uh... Verona is someone I could care less about. It, it just I know you can stop laughing at me now because I know that the next book is all Shido. <laughs> uh, I've had that kind of uh, pre-spoiled for me a little bit. So I know that it's not going away, but good God. Uninteresting. They're just not interesting to me. I already said that I felt like the Aiel were less interesting versions of the Fremen. Well, the, sh the Shido are even less than that. Uh, I just I don't care. After, after Matt dueled Kooladin, I felt like that was it for me. I didn't need any more. Uh, but again, like I said, I know you're probably laughing right here, but I'm just trying to say that's why I'm going to kind of glaze over the Shido in this review because I just don't care. And again, I don't care about Savannah. Please die soon. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's it. That's all I got for that. But how about some Forsaken talk? Um, if I recall correctly, this is the first time the name Nabliss has come up. And uh, honestly, there's a, a, you probably know if you're watching this, there's a very, very popular YouTuber who used the name Nabliss. So I knew it was from the story. I just didn't know in what the context was. But uh, someone named Sindane claims that Moradin's true name is is, is Nabliss. And uh, Gr Grandel? 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 She seems kind of skeptical on this whole thing. And then, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Shaiden Haral? Is that how you say it? He shows up and he confirms it's true and then snaps some random servant's neck for whatever reason. Uh, so honestly, to me, it seems like the Forsaken are still a very big hot mess when it comes to uh, leadership and far as who is in charge. You know, but uh, but Grandel, after that, she agrees to, uh, to, to, to follow him and do whatever needs to be done. But uh, I think it's kind of like if you guys watch Battlestar Galactica and you got to see that movie called The Plan, which it shows how much the Cylons screwed up and how just how many times they just seemed incompetent because no one knew it was in charge. That's kind of how I'm feeling like with the Forsaken. They're very, very powerful, and they should be winning easily, but they can't decide who's in charge and who, who needs to make the plans, and they just keep kind of screwing up. Because it seems like every book, they're, if, they're not, if there's not just a ton of infighting with them, it's like, well, this person's in charge, but are they? What about the Dark One? I don't know. And it just, it just kind of seems what, what it's like this point so far. So I'm hoping that kind of clears up just a little bit, because right now I'm like, these are your villains. I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of losing interest in your villains because I mean, this is the first one where Rand doesn't end up fighting a Forsaken. I think at the end of it, and I think it kind of suffers for it. So we got that. Uh, Cat's funny. She kind of has a brief appearance to go around, which doesn't bother me at all. I'm not really caring for. Her. Uh, but she has a meeting with Cerulea about making Rand uh, uh, laugh and cry again or something. Basically, just acting more human. Okay, whatever. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> she does talk about how that she can't, that she does, she does know that she can punish, uh, I guess, physically Alana without it affecting Rand. So I'm not sure if any of this has a point, but you know, here we are. Here we are. I don't feel like Robert Jordan's writing anything because it's not going to make sense later, but who knows? Because I do seem like this book is kind of all over the place. Uh, Egwene, uh, yeah, she does a lot of political maneuvering this go around. 
uh, just kind of to prove that she's not the puppet that they that they raised at Amelin. You know, and, and, and then Rand finds out about the Sanchan uh, invading Ibudar. So basically, guys, long story short, this book has about 400 pages of people deciding to go to war. Not marching to war, just deciding to go to war. I got a really loud truck. I'll be right back. Again, this isn't even like, hey, we're on our way to war. This is deciding to go to war. I mean, Egwene I, I, even says, yeah, uh, okay, so we've decided to go to war. We're going to start in about a month. At this point, I feel like all of this could have been done about half the pages. About 200 pages, I think, could have been really, really good with what has happened so far in this book, which is basically Elaine set off a nuclear bomb and everyone decided to go to war. That's what's happened in 400 pages. Again, I feel like this is an editing problem. And I know the story about Robert Jordan meriting his editor and him making uh, the, the book company a, a publisher a shit ton of money, so they were letting him do whatever they wanted. But again, I feel like that's the problem here. The story is still sound. It just could have been... I know this was already the shortest Wheel of Time book. could have been shorter. I feel like this is a 300, 350-page story. I really do. And uh, if you cut out all the filler... Yeah, about half this book is filler to me. So that's where we are. A nice scalpel. A scalpel probably would have helped the sloggy parts in this. And I'm guessing the books to follow. I've heard some people say they felt like books 8, 9, and 10 could have been combined, combined into one book. So far, one-third through that little, little, uh, little group there, uh, that sounds about accurate. Uh, the big part of this book, and the only part where I claim anything actually happened, is between Rand's forces and the Sanchan. Obviously, that's your, your big action piece in this book. Uh, you know, but in this battle, Rand actually, he actually takes an arrow in this fight, and he's kind of mostly useless during most of it, but this opens the door for Luce Theron to pop back up and, you know, kind of <laughs> be all crazy, and I love it. One thing I'll say that, that Robert Jordan writes really well is just how freaking batshit Luce Theron is, but I love it whenever him and Luce Theron are, are interacting, because I think it's terrific. Uh, more than just him telling them every time an Ashaman shows up to kill him. Uh, or, 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 you know, whistling a barrel lane. I, I feel like whenever he's actually interacting with Luce Theron is, is when the book really, really shines. But, uh, you know, this kind of gets ran cocky, and he whips out Kalendor. What? Uh, forgive me if I missed something, but I didn't even know he had this on him. Last I saw, I think it was in the beginning of Shadow Rising. Uh, he puts it in the, in the ground at Tyr and tells the people to watch over it, and he'll be back for it eventually. And now he just has it? I, I I don't know if I missed something. Please tell me if I missed something. Where, how did he get this? Where did it come from? Did someone go? He have someone go retrieve it for him? No, nah, I guess it isn't important. It's just like I didn't even know he had this sword on him. So it was really really weird. But uh, wielding the sword, it makes him damn near insane, you know. And he starts you know lightning and electrocuting everybody on both sides, including his own people. Bashir has to knock him down. It's kind of hoping he electrocuted Bashir because whatever. Uh, but he does have to make him stop, and then Rand comes to his senses and sees what he's done, and he basically takes his ball and goes home. Uh, so I guess you could call this the, uh, I know that some people have, have snickered at me when I said I felt like up to this point that Rand was kind of OP, and it, it, I didn't see how he was going to be beaten at this point. Like, he already felt like he was super over, just, he was going to be Ender. He's always going to win. It didn't, it didn't, nothing ever happened to him. And uh, I feel like this is the first time I guess you could, I mean, even though he killed most of the of the Shan Shan here, I mean, I feel like this can be the first time you could chalk this one up as a loss, or at least a you know a a, a draw. Uh, but you remember in the last review how I talked about how Min and Rand's relationship finally clicked for me, and of all the relationships with Rand and and the ladies, that I feel like this was the one that I was in support of. I don't like to use the word ship because I'm definitely not a, a shipper type, and I don't think that this is a shipper book, so I'm definitely not going to go there. But that was the relationship I felt like I, I could actually get behind. Well, that kind of gets torn down in this book because Rand comes back from the battle. He's sad about having that he's killed some of his own men. And, and men is just like, oh, whatever, I'm DTF. And it was like, well, that is so out of character for men. Uh, I know that if I had killed someone that I worked with and then I was trying to explain to my wife about, or the, say it was a girlfriend if you weren't married, and you're trying to explain to them how terrible you feel about this, and they're just like, whatever, let's screw. It would be kind of weird, right? So I felt like that was a really weird choice by Jordan this one after doing so well with her story in the last one. Um, again, way out of character. And, and this book just kind of ends strange. Um, I kind of thought something was up with Corlin de Shiva. I don't want to say I guessed this right. I know before in my theory that Majram Tame was uh, was actually Demadred, 
Uh, did I say Demondred? I He was one of the first. He was a Forsaken, let's put it that way. I don't remember exactly which one I said it was. Uh, but I, I didn't know necessarily that he was a that he was a Forsaken or anything like that. I just knew that something probably bad was going to happen to him because of all the Ashaman, that was the one who, whose Jordan consistently used his name a lot in these stories. So uh, his his heel turn didn't really surprise me. Uh, some other Ashaman end up attacking him too. As far as their names, again, there's so many names that just kind of let them slide. Uh, but, you know, Rand gives him chase, but they get away, and Masm Tame shows up and tells him, you know, they're going to hang for it. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of the end. Oh, but wait! But wait, there's another bonus chapter. Yes, and it's Shido-related, because uh, we find out that Fayo, Morghese, uh, Alindre, and some of the others have been taken prisoner by the Shido, the Shido and those sons of bitches are not going away like I asked them to. So, um, yes, I, like I said, I have been told that uh, the Shido is basically what War Winter's Heart is the Shido book. So I'm like, wait, they get a whole book? So, uh, yeah. While I say I'm not looking forward to it, um, <laughs> it is what it is at this point. So, look, I know that the fandom is split on this book, and I know that some of you have been with me since my Eye of the World review, or even my, you know, where I discussed why I decided to uh, to, to, to read this series. And, uh, and you might be fuming at me right now. I don't know. You might be yelling that I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't. I probably don't. This is the first time I've read this. Uh, a lot of you guys that are uh, Wheel of Time scholars or something like that, yes, you probably, you know the ending. You know what's important in this book and what's not. As a first-time reader, I really struggled with it. It was not really fun for the majority of it. It, uh, it felt like work. And I think this is the first time a book, uh, well, some parts of the, the circus, parts of Fire of Heaven, Fires of Heaven felt like a felt like a chore, really. But this is the first time, really, I was like, I mean, I know I finished this book in like five days. I always finish these Wheel of Time books in less than a week, except Shadow Rising, because it was a beast. But um, it just it didn't really click for me, guys. So I said, I don't want to say that this is the first one I don't like, but it's definitely at the bottom of my rankings right now. It's probably my least favorite I read up to this point. And uh, everybody tells me these books are better in a reread, especially the slog. Again, I think when you know what matters in this book, it might mean a little bit more. But where I'm at with that right now, yeah, I mean, I was prepared for this. And and I said in my video where I said as I'm approaching the slog that I knew that this was coming. And I was prepared to plow through it, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, I've been told Winter's Heart is even worse in this book. With a, it's, just, it's worse in this book, but with a better ending is what I've been told consistently by big-time fans. Um, so, I mean... Me not really caring for this and knowing that Winter's Heart is kind of more of the same from what it sounds like, uh, I'm not going to let that deter my schedule at all. I still plan on picking this up. I've got some stuff I'm going to be working on in the next month. we got a read-along coming on the channel and stuff like that. Uh, but I I figured, you know, there's going to be no six-month break this time. I figured the end of January is when I'll probably pick, be picking up Winter's Heart. It really just depends on how everything else goes. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in my last semester of school, I'm kind of off for the break, so I'm going to be reading a lot, taking a vacation here, I'm going to take a couple books with me on that. So I, I think that probably January is when you can expect me to continue this. Uh, I, I think what I'm going to kind of do is do like two at a time. So I'll probably try to, since, since 9 and 10 are consistently listed as the worst books in the series, I'll probably try to kind of do those almost back to back, maybe with a quick break between them, like a Dresden Files or something light in between them, just to kind of, kind of plow through it, you know? Uh, but uh I'll get more to it when I get close to the end, kind of a reflection on uh, on the books written by Robert Jordan. Because now that, even though I, I, I know that this is the part that, that fans continually trash, uh, I am starting to get a little sad knowing that I'm getting, you know, near the end of the original creator of this world story. And as much as I love Brandon Sanderson, and I think that uh, he'll probably fix a lot of things that I, I'm sorry, I don't want to say fix, because I feel it's disrespectful. He's going to be able to finish some of the things that Robert didn't get to finish. Uh, and, and I feel like that'll actually, you know, make a lot of the resolution of some of these characters that feel sidelined to me or just pointless of where they're at right now uh, worthwhile. worthwhile. So I, I'm kind of looking at that. But like I said, I am kind of sad that I'm getting towards the end of uh, the stuff that Jordan himself wrote, even if it is considered the, the bad stuff in the series. Uh, where are we at? Um... So I think I covered all the bases on all the characters. I don't want to go through each of them like I usually do. I'll go through each character and what I liked and didn't like about them. But I feel like you can watch my Crown of Swords review and know what I want to happen with each of these characters because not a lot changed in this book. Um, it's crazy to say that about a 700-page book that not much happened. Uh, I mean, yes, there was a big battle 
But I mean, that kind of feels like it, you know, uh, going into the Aes Sedai thing is still the same as I said last time. I want to see that resolution with the tower. I want to see that happen. It, it's land still MIA, loyal, and Tom still MIA. You know, it's just it's just the same stuff that, I, that I've repeated the last few videos. So I don't really want to get deep into that there. But um, the characters that I want more of are still absent, and the characters I want less of are still very, very prevalent. So, uh, I'm, again, I hope you guys aren't too upset that it sounds like I'm basically just completely trashing this book. Um, if any of the criticism that I laid out was too much and you feel like we've got a part here, uh, I just want to say thank you for watching this long. You know, I never expected this channel to kind of get to where it is based off the, the back of me reading Wheel of Time. Uh, just know that, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm critical but I don't feel like I'm unfair. And again, it's just my opinion. You know, uh, it's definitely not anything that's done with malicious intent. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I still enjoy talking to you guys about this series. And, uh, you know, again, the whole point of this channel is discussion. So if you guys want to talk about it, drop it in the comments. Tell me what you think I was wrong about. Tell me if you think I'm misinterpreting something. That's, again, that's what this is all about. I don't know everything about this series. No, not at all. There's plenty of stuff. I mean, I have told you, I didn't know if I missed something with Kalendor just kind of showing up out of nowhere. So please, I'm not going to bullshit you guys on this channel. I'm always going to tell you how I feel. I'm always going to be honest, even when it's an unpopular opinion. Like, I got an unpopular opinion video coming out about why I didn't really care for Name of the Wind. I don't expect that to go over well at all, you know? But I want to talk about these things and talk about why uh, I have these criticisms because... Different strokes for different folks, right? I know that there's a lot. Of, I mean, shoot, my buddy Narg, he's gonna come. He's gonna drop in the comments and tell me how wrong I am because I'm. I believe he says this is his favorite book in the series, and I just called it my least favorite up to this point. So I know it's not gonna go over well. But uh, again, uh, if this is a first time read for you guys too, and you just got here, tell me how you feel. Do you feel differently than I do at this point? Again, this doesn't demotivate me. I am still going to continue the series. I still have much, much love for the series. There's way more pros and cons. This was just the first book I felt like was more negative than positive for me. So, looking forward to uh, to Winter's Heart, even though I've been warned about.